It seems aliens from Rigel 7 have invaded the workshop, and they are wreaking havoc. Strangely enough, from this distant star, they know how to communicate. One of them is looking for the Earth capital, no doubt very angry at Earth leaders. Oh no, it looks as though they plan to cook us, or at least 40 of us. Oh no, they are apparently intergalactic caterers. What have they brought for us? Some type of space rock. Well, that's gentlemanly of them. He's got a ray gun, watch out. I wrestled one of their ray guns away from them. Let me see if I can take him out. It seems to be having no effect. Wait a minute, I'm being told smaller hybrid versions of the aliens are already invading. What? Oh! Oh no! Look out! Stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of the avocado-colored cyclopic cephalopods. Words cannot express how excited I am to open Kangen Kodos. I think I ordered them from Super 7 in like, I don't know, probably within two minutes of the pre-order going up. I have been like freaking out inside. I guess three-year-old me was the first time I would have seen Kang and Kodos on screen because The Simpsons premiered in 1987 and Euler's Workshop was born in 1986. And the first episode they premiered in, if I'm not mistaken, is in season two because they didn't start doing the Treehouse of Horror episodes until season two, which is when we first see Kang and Kodos. I love like classic sci-fi. I love old comic book covers. I love vacuum tubes and Nixie tubes, Star Wars and Flash Gordon looking stuff and all of that. And I remember as a kid, part of the reason I love that stuff is because of these two awesome characters right here. They were so cool to me when I was a kid and so fun and I was always so excited to see them because they were always reserved for special episodes. I want to be the first one to see what's under these slip covers so I'm going to face them towards me and let you see my facial expression because I love these characters. I love them, I love them, I love them. And so I haven't seen what they look like, the finished product yet. So here we go. I'm going to start with, start with Kang. I'm just going to take off the slip cover and react and I will show you afterwards. <laughs> so... Woo! Super 7, thank you for making these. Oh my gosh, they're huge! <laughs> Holy cow! It's huge! Look! Look at how big that is! He's huge! I've been wanting Kang and Kodos quality collectibles ever since I was a child. There's the Playmates line where they made a couple of them that they weren't really scale accurate and they were just like solid cast pieces of plastic. And then there was the uh, Funko Pop ones that were kind of cool, but I really wasn't into. And there's been like obviously posters and things like that, but there's never been a really cool figure or collectible statue, especially not one that's articulated. This is huge. I know the line is currently canceled. I really hope you get to make some more someday, Brian at Super 7. There's so many characters that I want. In this format, you made this line for me, for people like me, 100%. And I have a lot to say. I don't know how much I'll share, but I have a lot to say. Take a look at Kodos. Oh, man. <laughs> he's just as cool. Oh, he's so cool. Oh, these are awesome. I can't, I'm gonna, these are getting a special place on my back wall. At least one of them, probably both of them. To me, this is absolutely worth $75 a piece. I mean, I watched just about every piece of content I could find with any YouTuber. I was lurking on some of the content. I didn't really comment or interact. But I just wanted to see what people thought about this line, the Super 7 Ultimate Simpsons line, and what people were saying. And I know there was a lot of complaints about what figures were included in what wave. I feel like a lot of the criticism came from folks who probably who were probably nowhere near my level of fandom and clearly Super 7's level of fandom. It's a weird double-edged sword because there's probably not a lot of people like me out there who are willing to pay what these are worth, in my opinion. 50 to $75 a piece for these really well-designed, really well-made, really really cool accessories with deep cuts for super fans action figures that's totally reasonable to me if you wanted like 112 scale small figures that didn't articulate very much like jack specific is coming out with well that's the line for you but criticizing this line because it's not like that it's there's just no comparison in my mind these are a form of art they're mass produced art but they're small run mass produced art and I really, really, really don't think a lot of the criticism was properly warranted. 
even as a super fan who loves every choice they made, I would have definitely ordered the choices in the waves that they came in a little differently. And I would have picked a few different characters to start and added some of the characters we had later. I think it could have been a little bit more successful. As far as the reception of collectors and potential purchasers, at these prices, most people, even super fans like me, are not gonna be able to afford every single figure. We're gonna pick and choose the ones we really love. For me, Kang and Kodos is always gonna be number one. But then after that, characters I would love to have in this format, Ned Flanders, Millhouse's Fallout Boy, Groundskeeper Willie, Comic Book Guy is the collector with like Xena in some Mylar packaging. That would be hilarious. Like stuff like that I would love to have. I did get Radioactive Man, but to be honest, I would have preferred the Rainier Wolf Castle version of Radioactive Man. I mean, I like them both, of course, but I think I have more fun memories of the Rainier Wolf Castle episode where they're filming and all that and they cast Millhouse. I think that would have been really cool to have those. Bartman's a great choice. Krusty's a great choice. A lot of these were great choices. I just think I would have came at it a little bit differently so that as a company, I could get more up front and keep people interested over maybe like the course of 10 to 12 waves. And then I feel like that might have been all it had in it was maybe 10 to 12 waves of four to six figures. And we got four waves. So it's really disappointing. I hope that there's some way in the universe they could bring it back and do like 10 or 12 more characters obviously that's probably not going to happen but it would make my day as a simpson super fan i'm one of those collectors that i think i don't know if i'm a i'm a niche within a niche or not but when it comes to like big fandoms i don't really gravitate as much towards the main characters in that fandom like for example star wars i'm an enormous star wars super fan and have been my entire life but I have like no desire to go out and collect Luke, Han, Leia, Chewie. I'm more in search of collectibles from those franchises that have more specialness and novelty. Characters like Luke, Han, Leia, Chewie, they're like, uh, they're sort of obvious choices to me. So I don't seek them out first. I seek, I tend to seek out the more interesting things. You see behind me, I have a lot of stuff like that. I have some stuff that would be pretty much upfront and mainstream. And they're definitely those are the collectibles I got because of the memories and the fun I have. My Varia suit, Samus, my Link figure over there. But if you notice, the Iron Man I have behind me is the Starboost suit and I have the probe droid over there and I got some I got some very specific Ashley Wood collectibles over there I like stuff that stands out as different and of course one of the reasons I gravitate towards Kang and Kodos in the Simpsons is they're the only two characters in the show like them actually technically there's four aliens there's Kang there's Kodos there's one alien who's voiced by James Earl Jones, Darth Vader himself, and says, Very much, mister. To pronounce it correctly, I would have to pull out your tongue. Ooh. And then at the end of the episode, there's another alien where Lisa discovers the cookbook, and he's called Serac the Preparer. But obviously later on, we only see Kang and Kodos. So we have four inhabitants of Rigel 7 who speak Rigelian, which is incidentally exactly the same as English. And we get some of the greatest content that The Simpsons ever produced in my mind, Kang being Maggie's father. The reason I say that is my favorite joke in all of Simpsons ever that makes me laugh every single time I see it is this. Ah. Oh, you look lovely this evening. Have you decreased in mass? And now we return for our exciting conclusion of Invasion of the Avocado Colored Cyclopic Cephalopods. In search of a potential hero to save the workshop, Euler turns to his comic books. And look, out of the sky, our hero arrives. Who is it? Radioactive Man. Fallout Boy is nowhere in sight. Radioactive Man seems to be solo today. There's no task too big and no task too small for Radioactive Man. The aliens noticing the first guest has arrived have decided to cater to him. The little one is approaching. Radioactive Man attempts to neutralize the threat. He's only angered them more. It seems they have no desire to cater anymore and have both taken up arms against our bold hero. Our hero seems surrounded. How will he get out of this one? Radioactive Man activates his radiation. I bet they didn't expect that. With the added strength, he's able to re repel the rayguns and subdue the polite enemies. Oh no, Radioactive Man was incompetently unaware that the insatiable invaders feed off of radiation. Oh no, it seems as if the sea foam tinted alien invaders have taken away Radioactive Man to feast upon him. Looks like someone will be dining tonight after all. That's all we have for you tonight, folks. Thanks to our sponsor, Super 7, for creating these wonderful action figures. And don't forget Arcturus Electron Tubes. Quality tube since 1925.